Never before have I owned a camera this powerful. This is the ASI 2600MC Duo camera, and it's not just your average high resolution astronomy camera, it's capable of so much more. It has one very special, unique skill that is going to make all your observations 10 times easier. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing it in detail. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Okay, so first things first, there is a lot going on with this whole setup, so let's focus on the camera itself. So, we are looking at a very chunky boy indeed. It is a phenomenal camera. 2600, that's a reference to its total resolution capabilities. It can take 26 megapixel photos. I do have the color version, which means I don't need to keep putting in filters to my setup, but here is the twist. This is what makes this camera stand out above all the rest, because at the end of its name, you will see the word duo referring to two, because inside here it has two sensors. Now why does it need two sensors? Well, the first one is the main sensor which we use for our imaging, 26 megapixel photos. But the second one is a much smaller sensor which can be used for guiding your telescope without having to add a finder scope on top of it. So let's just go through what we'd actually have to do if we want to guide our telescope with an additional camera and guide. Let's go. We'd have to mount on top of our telescope another smaller telescope and then we're going to add an additional camera we're going to say for instance the asi 220 i'm going to plug it into the back and then put in a bunch of new cables and attach it to either our computer or in this instance i have the asi air plus and then we're going to have to do separate setups in order to get it guiding that is such a headache it's so much extra effort whereas with the asi 2600 mc duo it's much more simplified because they're both included in one package you don't need any extra equipment on it you just need the one camera and the one telescope that's it and for me that truly is a game changer but because they do have two sensors included on the same camera it has actually changed the filter screw that you attach to the camera itself because it needs to be a little bit bigger now so you can include light going to both of the sensors that's not too much of a difficulty because they do include the adapters to allow you to do so so what i've been using to test out this camera is the asi air plus and then i've got out my smartphone to actually control this entire setup all as one and see the images produced from this live on my phone in fact, the ASI Air actually has a very cool feature that allows you to live stack the images you take. So not only am I seeing the images appear right on my phone before me as they're being captured, I'm also seeing them gradually get better and better with the higher amount of exposures taken because the resultant image is a lot clearer. The signal to noise ratio is much higher and the images produced are incredibly clear. But don't just take my word for it, why not analyze them for yourself? During my observations, I looked at quite a few targets, but my time with each of them was very limited. Here are my three favorites. From left to right, we have the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiades, and the Flame and Horsehead Nebulae. It's extremely important to note the total exposure times for each of these images, all of which were less than one hour. So let's start with the shortest exposure time of the three, my 14 minutes stacked image of the Andromeda Galaxy. It does have a slightly odd orientation that you may not be used to, with our neighbouring galaxy being imaged in portrait as opposed to landscape. Here, it is perfectly framed for being shared to Instagram, but since this is a YouTube video, let's alter the orientation to landscape. This is especially easy to do so as the resolution of the image is a colossal 26 megapixels, meaning we can crop it in quite significantly and still see a lot of detail. In fact, what you're seeing right now is the image being cropped down to 12 megapixels, or 4K resolution. There's no denying how spectacular it looks, but remember, this is just 14 minutes of exposure time. Some astrophotographers will take single exposures in one filter longer than this. I spent the majority of my time looking at the Seven Sisters, as it was clear from the second I lined them up in my field of view that the delicate dust clouds enveloping this young star cluster were already visible. And with each passing exposure, more and more of its intricate features were captured until I settled on this gorgeous image. But I've saved the very best till last. When first getting into astrophotography more than 10 years ago, my equipment was very rudimentary, meaning objects like the Horsehead Nebula were impossible to make out, or so it seemed at the time. With only a DSLR camera and a 4 inch reflector telescope, I struggled over and over again to reveal this dark nebula which is why this is so special to me. It truly feels like unlocking an entire different universe with the ridiculous amounts of detail and structures that this camera can pick up. 
The exposure time is still only a very modest 42 minutes. I'm very much looking forward to dedicating an entire night to imaging these deep sky objects. The wonderful array of different colours featured in the third image is really highlighted by the ASI 2600 MC Duo. It truly is astonishing to think that this camera captured all three of these stunning landscapes in just under two hours time. I think I've already spent more time than that zooming in and marvelling at the level of detail in each of these images. They're absolutely amazing. What I'm also really excited about is the fact that I can create super in-depth mosaic images, which means I can take multiple frames side by side and then stitch them all together to create a resulting image that could easily exceed 100 megapixels. So for targets like the Orion Nebula, which I'm going to point to right now actually, which is just up there, but then also just a tiny bit up to the left is the Horsehead and Flame Nebulas. So I'd really like to be able to put all of those in the same shot. So I think I'm going to try and do that tonight with this camera. I wasn't able to complete the mosaic whilst I was in Tenerife, so I'm going to finish this off some point later this month, if the weather is agreeable. The plan was to produce an 8 panel mosaic image of roughly 175 megapixels. I did capture the Orion Nebula, but as you can clearly see, I botched the core completely, heavily overexposing it. But the level of detail in the dust clouds that the camera has brought out is just phenomenal. There we have it. That is my review of the ASI 2600 MC Duo. I'm very impressed by it. It certainly packs a punch and I cannot emphasize how incredibly helpful it is to have your guide sensor included in your main camera. It just means that this setup is much more streamlined. Thank you very much ZWO for sending me the camera to try out. And if you'd like to purchase it for yourself, then I've included the product links in the description below. If you'd like to purchase or have a look at any of the other pieces of equipment featured in today's video, then I've also attached links to them below. Be sure to check them out and subscribe to the channel as I'll be making further reviews on them in the near future. Thanks for watching, I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.